Hello, I am Konstantin and I'm going to talk about multi-channel Bayesian persuasion. This is a joint work with Yakov Babichenko in Basel Gam Kohen and Haifeng Shu. There are many real-life examples in which a well-informed company or person aims to influence the behavior of a group of people by strategically revealing some information. One such example is a politician trying to persuade voters. A standard mathematical model capturing this situation and many others is Bayesian persuasion. In the Bayesian persuasion model, there is an agent called sender, uh, for example, a politician who aims to persuade some set of agents called receivers, uh, for example, voters, to act in the sender's favor. Both the sender and each of the receivers have some utility function, and the utility functions need not to be aligned between the agents. We assume that uh, there is a certain value called state, which is known to the sender, but not to the receivers. It might be, for example, uh, the plan of the politician. However, we assume that there is a common knowledge prior distribution on the values of this state. The sender strategically commits to some information revelation policy, which we call the signaling scheme, before observing the true value of the state. The current literature on Bayesian persuasion mostly assumes a dichotomy between uh, two extreme settings. In one such setting, the sender can communicate via a separate private channel with each of the receivers. And surprisingly, this setting is called private persuasion. The second extreme uh, in which the sender must send the same signal to each of the receivers. This is public persuasion. However, in many real life situations, it is natural to assume that the sender can communicate with different subsets of receivers using different channels. And this is the setting we study. Such channels may be specified, uh, for example, uh, by groups in social media or by billboards. Let's illustrate our setting through an example. In this example, uh, we have uh, three states, and uh, the power probabilities of them uh, are uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and 0.2. We have a sender and four receivers. We also have three communication channels. The red channel is observed by the first two receivers. The purple channel is observed by the last three receivers, and the green channel is observed by receivers two and three. First of all, the sender should commit to a signaling scheme sigma. The signaling scheme is a randomized function from the space of the states to a certain uh, space of uh, signals. In other words, for every possible state, the signaling scheme specifies with which probability to send which combination of signals via the different communication channels. Upon committing to the signaling scheme, uh, uh, the true state is drawn according to the prior distribution and is reported to the sender. Then uh, this true value of the state together with the signaling scheme specify which signals are sent uh, via the communication channels. Each receiver sees the signals uh, which uh, correspond to the communication channels that she observes. In our example, receiver one observes only the red communication channel, and therefore she only sees uh, the signal sigma one. On the other hand, the second receiver observes all three communication channels, and therefore she learns sigma one, sigma two, and sigma three. Upon observing uh, the relevant signals, each receiver uses a biases law to update her belief about the distribution of uh, the state from the prior distribution to a certain posterior distribution. And then each receiver takes a certain action aiming to maximize her expected utility over the posterior distribution. 
Now that the utility of each agent uh, may depend on the true value of the state as well as on the actions of all the receivers. That is, they allow externalities uh, between the receivers, uh, meaning that uh, the utility of some receiver is specified not only by the true state and her own action, but probably also by the actions of the other receivers. Know that in this setting, the designer is the sender. So uh, the only freedom is the sender's choice of the signaling scheme. And therefore, as the standard in the Bayesian preservation literature, we mostly focus on the sender's point of view. Specifically, the sender wishes to maximize her expected utility over the signaling scheme. And uh, the goal of us as the researchers is to help the sender to find such a a utility maximizing signaling scheme. But this is a standard assumption in the Bayesian preservation literature. The distinguishing property of our work is that we study the most general preservation setting uh, with arbitrary communication channel structure, prior distribution, and utilities of the sender as well as the receivers. Before presenting our main result, let's introduce a simple mathematical uh, formalization, which uh, describes the structure of the communication channels. Suppose we have K receivers and then communication channel. Then we define the communication structure to be a binary matrix in which each row represents another receiver and each column represents another communication channel. And the... Uh, uh, each entry of this matrix is one if and only if the corresponding uh, receiver observes the corresponding communication channel. Consider an example with six receivers and four communication channel. Uh, so uh, the communication structure is a binary matrix with uh, six rows and uh, four uh, columns. And uh, the first uh, communication channel is uh, the black channel. It is observed by receivers one, two, and three, and therefore uh, in the first column, the first three entries are ones and the others are zeros. The second communication channel is the right one. And so the second column contains uh, ones in the first, the fourth, and the sixth entry, and the other entries are zeros. The third uh, communication channel, which is the proper one, is observed by receivers two, five, and six, while uh, the fourth and the last communication channel is observed by receivers three, four, and five. The main question we study in this work is under which conditions one communication structure is better for the sender than the other in the robust sense. And robustness here means that uh, the sender's preferences should hold regardless of her own utility function, as well as the receiver's utility functions and the prior distribution. Note that uh, this question is related uh, to a previous work of Galperti and Perego, who study a similar question in a slightly different setting. For a fixed communication structure, we can define a partial ordering among the receivers via the relation of information uh, domination. We say that a receiver is information dominated by those receivers who observe at least the same communication channels. In this example, uh, receiver number one uh, observes only the red communication channel and the, the second receiver also observes uh, the, the communication channel and therefore receiver one is information dominated by receiver two. Also note that in this example, receiver two uh, is not information dominated by any other receiver because uh, she is the only receiver observing all three communication channels. Note that uh, the information uh, dominance relation defines a partial ordering among uh, communication structures. Intuitively, uh, the less uh, information dominating pairs in, in terms of uh, set containment the information structure has, uh, 
the better for the sender because the, the sender has uh, more flexibility when implementing the signaling scheme. And it turns out uh, that uh, uh, when we uh, formalize this intuition, we get a necessary and sufficient condition uh, for uh, one uh, communication structure to be better uh, for the sender than the other in the robust sense. Specifically, it turns out, and this is our main result, that a communication structure M1 is weakly better for the sender than another communication structure M2, regardless of the prior distribution and the utility functions of both the sender and the receivers, if and only if every information dominating pair in M1 is also an information dominating pair in M2. For example, uh, let's consider such communication structures that don't contain information dominating pairs at all. Arguably the simplest one uh, is private persuasion. So uh, each receiver has uh, her own private communication channel and uh, definitely uh, no receiver information dominates another receiver. It follows from our main result that since in private persuasion, there are no information dominating pairs, it is the best possible communication structure for the sender. However, it is totally unsurprising because uh, this is the most flexible setting for the sender. The much more surprising corollary is that any information structure without information dominating pairs of receivers is equivalent to private persuasion in terms of optimal uh, expected sender's utility. If we go back to uh, our example uh, from a few slides ago uh, with uh, six receivers and four communication channels, then we can see that it doesn't contain information dominating pairs of receivers. Because I remind you that uh, in the table uh, representing uh, the communication structure, each row represents which uh, communication channels are absorbed by a specific receiver. And we can see that in this example, no row dominates another row. So this communication structure is equivalent to private persuasion. And in some sense, it is better uh, than the naive implementation of private persuasion because it requires only four communication channels rather than six in the naive implementation of private persuasion. Continuing in a similar flavor, we can deduce from our main result, then the sender can implement private persuasion using a number of channels, which is only logarithmic in the number of receivers, which is an exponential improvement upon the naive implementation of private persuasion using a separate channel for each receiver. And moreover, our construction matches the information theoretical logger bound uh, of uh, the number of channels required to implement a private persuasion, regardless uh, of uh, the utility functions and the prior distribution. As for uh, the proof of our main result, it uh, is uh, highly inspired by cryptography and more specifically by, by uh, secret sharing protocols. At a high level, suppose that uh, at a certain communication structure, the sender can implement a certain uh, signaling scheme. Then if we remove some information dominating pairs from the communication structure, the sender still can implement uh, this uh, signaling scheme using encryption. Let's demonstrate it uh, in an example. So here we have uh, five uh, receivers and suppose that the sender wishes to uh, transmit a private message sigma to the first receiver. Uh, as we shall uh, see in a few seconds, uh, receiver one is not information dominated by any other receiver. And therefore, if the theorem is true, it should be doable. And uh, let's assume that uh, the signal is a number between zero and one. So uh, let's give a try uh, by uh, sending uh, via the purple communication channel uh, uh, a message to the first receiver. So an obvious problem is that uh, 
uh, receivers two, three, and four would also absorb this message because they share the proper communication channel of the first receiver. And uh, to overcome this obstacle, the sender should pick three uh, encryption keys, which are IAD uniform numbers between zero and one, one encryption key uh, per uh, receiver sharing the purple communication channel with the first receiver. And then rather than transmitting sigma itself uh, using the purple channel, the sender should transmit a sigma plus the sum of the encryption keys modulo one via the purple channel. Then uh, the sender should uh, look for a, a communication channel, which is absorbed by the first receiver, but not by the second one, which must exist if indeed the first receiver is not information dominated by the second one. And in our case, indeed such a channel exists and it is the, the red channel. The sender should use uh, the red uh, communication channel to transmit uh, the encryption key E2. The second step is looking for a, a communication channel absorbed by receiver one, but not by receiver three, which must exist if receiver one is not information dominated by receiver three. And indeed such a channel exists and it is uh, the green channel. And the, the sender should uh, send the, the key E3 via the green channel. And finally, the red channel is absorbed uh, by uh, receiver one, but not by receiver four. And the, the sender uh, should use uh, the red channel to uh, transmit uh, the key E4. Receiver one uh, learns both a uh, sigma plus E2 plus E3 plus E4 modulo one, and also each one of the encryption keys E2, E3, and E4. And therefore, she can uh, decrypt uh, the private message sigma. On the other hand, each of the other receivers uh, doesn't uh, learn at least one of these messages just by construction. Each one uh, of the receivers, but the first one just sees some uh, IAD uniform numbers between zero and one, and so she learns nothing. And therefore, this methodology is equivalent to sending a private message to the first receiver. Uh, the proof of theorem one uh, in general is uh, much more technically involved, uh, in particular because uh, we must deal uh, with uh, externalities between receiver. And to overcome it, uh, we use uh, Harsani's universal type space. But uh, at a high level, uh, the proof is based on the same simple idea. Now let's discuss uh, our algorithmic results, starting with the positive result. Uh, in this result, uh, we consider the so-called forest communication structures. And what does it mean? As I have already mentioned, the information dominance relation introduces a partial ordering among the receivers. And uh, let's build a directed uh, graph on the set of receivers by uh, introducing an edge between uh, two receivers which are consecutive in this uh, partial ordering. If the resultant graph is a forest, then we say that we have a forest communication structure. Continuing with this uh, assumption that we have a forest communication structure, we restrict attention only uh, to additive sender utilities because uh, this special case is already uh, interesting. Uh, that is, uh, we assume that uh, the receivers have no externalities and uh, one can separate sender's utility function to a uh, case summons, each one of which only depends on the information that the sender reveals to uh, the corresponding receiver. And we introduce the regularity assumption the teach demand is either Lipschitz continuous or piecewise constant. We further only focus on a constant number of states because it is well known that for a general number of states, even for public Bayesian persuasion, it is uh, hard to approximate the optimal sender's utility even for additive sender's utility function. Under these assumptions, we provide an additive FP task for the optimal sender signaling scheme. The proof of this result relies on the notion of mean preserving spreads. 
which is the relation between probability distributions. We say that uh, one distribution is a mean preserving spread of another if uh, it can be obtained from the original distribution by repeating the following process. Uh, take uh, some uh, probability mass at the distribution and uh, split it between uh, other uh, points in a way that uh, the weighted average of uh, the new points is the original point. For example, if we have a distribution on a segment uh, on the real line, assigning uh, 0.8 probability mass to the left point and uh, 0.2 probability mass uh, to the right point, then we can get a mean preserving spread of it by uh, splitting the 0.8 mass on the left point to two equal amounts and moving each uh, amount uh, uh, by uh, equal distances to either side of this point, uh, because in this way, uh, the weighted average of uh, the new two points would be trivially equal uh, to the original point with the uh, 0.8 uh, probability mass assigned. Now back to the proof of the uh, positive agreement result. Uh, very interested in finding a nice uh, characterization of uh, marginal distributions over posteriors of all the receivers uh, that uh, are uh, possible to the sender to implement uh, by signaling scheme. And uh, by nice characterization, I mean necessary and sufficient conditions uh, which uh, are specified by linear constraints. Because once we have such a characterization, we can discretize the problem and uh, solve a, a linear program. And uh, a previous work of Brooks et al. provides such a characterization, and this characterization uh, uses a uh, mean preserving spread. Specifically, it is necessary and sufficient uh, for uh, a set of marginal distributions over posteriors of the receivers to be implementable as a signaling scheme, if and only if. Uh, when we take a, a more informed and the less informed uh, receiver in terms of information dominance and uh, require uh, that uh, the marginal distribution over posteriors of the more informed receiver would be a mean preserving spread of the marginal distribution of the less informed receiver. And this way we can get a linear program and, and solve it. Now let's discuss a, a negative algorithmic result, which holds uh, even for uh, two states and the uh, receivers only having two actions uh, and without externalities. First, let's describe a uh, standard and uh, simple uh, center utility uh, function family called supermajority functions. A supermajority function uh, gets uh, the value of one if uh, the number of receivers uh, taking a certain action is above a certain threshold and zero otherwise. For example, a simple majority is a supermajority function. We generalize this class of uh, centers utilities by uh, defining a partition of the set of receivers and uh, setting uh, a separate supermajority function on each element of this partition. Then we take a weighted average of uh, all the uh, supermajority functions uh, we defined on the partition elements, and we call this weighted average a separable supermajority function. It can be easily shown uh, using uh, well-known results on Bayesian persuasion that both public persuasion and private persuasion is computationally tractable for separable supermajority super centers utilities. However, we show that unless p equals n p, one cannot find in time a polynomial in the number of receivers uh, for a general communication structure, uh, the optimal centers uh, expected utility uh, when the, the centers utility is a separable supermajority function. So uh, in general, multi-channel uh, persuasion is computationally harder than both private and public persuasion. The main takeaway from our paper is the full characterization of a partial ordering over all possible communication structures 
according to uh, robust center's preferences. Uh, the robustness means that the preferences are regardless of uh, sender's own utilities, as well as uh, the utilities uh, of the receivers and the prior distribution. It is interesting to study in depth the connection of our model to various real-life situations. We provide both a positive and a negative uh, algorithmic result for uh, some actual special cases. But uh, definitely there are more interesting uh, special cases uh, worth studying. One specific setting is uh, fixing uh, utilities uh, for uh, the sender and the receivers and some prior distribution and providing the sender with uh, a certain uh, communication structure, uh, but uh, allowing the sender some freedom uh, in uh, performing changes to the structure. Uh, for example, uh, one may allow the sender to add a limited number of communication channels. A natural question is uh, whether it's computationally tractable to find uh, the optimal in the center's point of view uh, outcome uh, of such a setting. Thank you very much for your attention.